Hare right, Shalom, first and foremost, O nigga of all praises, honor and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakodash, O nigga of double honors to the apostles and elders, a great millstone, peace and salutations to the Akim, to the elect, that are scattered throughout the four corners of this earth, pushing the truth and faith and sincerity. All right, now this is going to be a lesson on um a statement that Yahweh Shai said to his disciples, all right, uh, about the scribes and the Pharisees, you know, because in this chapter, the the, uh, the scribes and the Pharisees, they basically charge Yahweh Shai up about something that his disciples were not doing, right? About the uh, a tradition that was kept, you know, and I'll start at the, uh, the first verse, you know, going to it. This is Matthew 15, 1. It says, Then came to Yahweh Shai scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. All right, so they were tripping on this, the uh, the disciples for not keeping the tradition that they kept back then of the, of the washing of the hands. And it wasn't a, a regular type of, you know, wash your hands like you go do today. You know, you can go walk in the bathroom, you know, wherever you at, turn on the water faucet and wash your hands. No, it was it was more to it than that. All right, it was a uh, a whole type of it was a, it was a process that they that they had set up. You know, uh, a particular way, all right, that you had to do it. You know, and when they didn't see the disciples do that, they kind of pissed them off because you know the scribes and the Pharisees, right? They were like bosses of the law, or right? the Pharisees. They were bosses of the law, so you know <laughs> they were kind of offended at that. But they led Yahweh Shai to say this statement. Down here, uh, Matthew 15 and 11 says, Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth the man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth the man. Right, so when they when they charged him up about that, this is this is what he said to him. Right, it ain't about what goes into the mouth that defiles you, but it what comes out. Right, and they wanted to, and the disciples wanted to know what did he mean when he said that. Right, and uh. I'll jump down to verse 15. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. And Yahweh Shah said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the drop? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the mind, and they defile the man. For out of the mind proceed or of the heart right because your heart is the mind it says proceed evil thoughts murders adulterers fornications thefts false witness blasphemies these are the things which to follow man but to eat with unwashing hands to follow not a man right so he said when you eat something basically all that gets pushed out right naturally through the through the uh, di digestive system, right? Let's say you you eat a burger or something, right? You know you gotta you gotta go get that burger and you gotta eat that burger and it and it and it's gonna come out sooner or later, right? But with wickedness, there is no natural, you know, there's no digestive system, no natural way. <laughs> uh, the body has no natural way of pushing wickedness out, right? Because that's already in you, right? That defiles you. All these things that he stated, adulteries, fornication, theft, false witness, blasphemies, right? Because all of that comes from within, right? It shows who you are, right? So that is how you defile. They came, they, the Pharisees came tripping on the disciples about unwashing hands when they were unwashed in the spirit, right? Because Yahweh shot was, he always warned uh, the, the disciples about the Pharisees, right? Multiple on multiple occasions, right? Letting you letting them know that look, these dudes right here, they not right, right? So uh, this is Matthew uh, sixteen and five, and when his disciples would come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Then Yahweh Shai said unto them, Take heed. And beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees, right? And they reasoned among themselves, saying, Is it because we have taken no bread? 
Right, so he said, beware the leaven. And the disciples thought that he was actually talking about, you know, physical bread. But this is what Yahweh Shah told him. It says, uh, verse 8, which when Yahweh Shah perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves because ye have brought no bread? Do you not understand, neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand and how many baskets ye took up? Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand and how many baskets ye took up? How is it that ye do not understand that I speak it not to you concerning bread, that ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? Right, he said, man, y'all, are y'all serious, bro? Y'all actually think I'm talking about real bread, bro? Did, did y'all not just see me do these miracles? You know, feed, feed all these people with the with the few food that you had, right? Feed these the, these great multitudes, right? With the few bread that you had, bro. That's, that's not what I'm talking about, right? He said, then, then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees. And of the Sadducees, right? So what is that leaven going into? You know, because you see that it's not talking about actual bread, but he said of the doctrine. How could there be leaven in the doctrine? What does leaven represent? This is First Corinthians 5. I started 6. It says, your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven... Leaven it the whole lump. Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Yahweh shall pass over his sacrifice for us. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. So that leaven, right, let me read verse 8. It says, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness. So leaven represents wickedness, right? So he, when he said, beware of the leaven of the scribes and I mean, of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, he was talking about, they would basically call them some wicked niggas, basically, all right? Saying, look, man, watch out for these dudes, man. Hey, they ain't right. These dudes are wicked, right? And that's why it was funny because they, they, they was... Cause like I said, they were bosses of the law. They charged them up. I'm like, man, why they ain't, why they ain't keeping the traditions? You know, they ain't washing their hands. This and that. And you always try to get on their ass. Like, bro, y'all, y'all niggas are wicked, right? Cause he, cause you always shy. He, he, he knew people's thoughts, right? He, 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 he knew their thoughts. So he knew that they were wicked, man. He knew that they were the foul, right, on the inside, right? And they were worried about unwashing hands, right? And they, and they needed to be washed in the spirit. This is uh, Ephesians 5 and 26. It says uh, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. So this 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 word all right, is the ultimate washing. This 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 word cleanses you. Right? This word sanctifies you. This is John 17 and 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Right? And when you go into this word sanctify, right? One of the definitions, uh, like if you read from uh, number three, it says to purify, to cleanse externally, to purify by expiation, free from the guilt of sin. To purify internally by the renewing of the soul, right? So this word renews your spirit, right? That's why Yahweh should always say you had to be born again, right? Put off that old man and become a new man, right? This is Psalms 119 and 9. It says, Wherewithal well, shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereunto, according to thy word. And the, 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 the scribes and the Pharisees, oh, those certain particular men, right? They did not take, they wasn't taking heed to the, to, the, uh, to the commandments or to the words of the Most High. They were just talking it, right? So they weren't cleansed. They were unwashed, right? Because what the Yahweh should I say in Matthew 23? 
Then spake Yahweh shot to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. See, it said they say and do not. They saying they saying all these great things. Yeah, we keeping this, we keeping that, this law and that law, right? They trying to force force everybody, you know, to 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 keep all these traditions and all these laws when they ain't even keeping it themselves, right? Just says for they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their one of their fingers, right? So they putting all this. The stress and on everybody, all these burdens, you know, you got you to gotta follow this, you got to follow that. Or why you ain't keeping this tradition, or why you ain't keeping that. When these niggas, the whole time, these niggas are wicked, right? They are defiled, they are unwashed, right? <laughs> you know? So, uh, let me get a uh, Mark, I'll end it off on this. Mark 7 and 18. And he said unto them, Are ye so without understanding also? Do ye not perceive that whatsoever thing from without enter it into the man, it cannot defile him? Because it enter it not into his heart or his mind, but into the belly, and goeth out into the drought, purging all meats. And he said, That which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. From for from within of the heart, men proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murderers, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. See? So all of these things come from within you. They are in you already. Right? And you have to... You have to purge those things up. You have to get those things up out of you, bro. You have to become a new man. And 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 they 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 wasn't they wasn't really following or really was about you know the word of the Most High. They were just pretenders. They were hypocrites. The whole Matthew twenty three, Yahweh Shop was getting on them, telling them they were hypocrites, right? But like I said, like your body has it, your body is gonna uh push out, you know. Whatever you eat, right? But your body doesn't push out wickedness. You got to push it out, right? You got to get that shit up out of you, you know? And that's just something that they did not do, right? You know, uh, that's really was it. And I hope this lesson was edifying, you know. I hope I made uh, my point clear, you know. So with that, we give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Chakadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of the great millstone, peace and salutations to the occupant to the elect that are scattered throughout the four corners of this earth, pushing his truth and faith and sincerity. Shalom.